What's up, you guys? I'm back. It's Layla Lynn, and I'm back, and I'm black, and I'm back. And this time, I wanted to do a video on the big slides told in the movie Self Made, which was inspired by the story of Madam C.J. Walker. I've done my digging, I've gone through the record books, and I want to present to you the top five biggest lies told in that movie and once you know this information once you know the lies that are told in that movie you will not look at the movie the same the movie self-made is for entertainment purposes the movie was made for entertainment and we have to remember that it's for entertainment and not education there is a difference and the movie is specifically for your entertainment in this particular video i've done my best to gather the facts and I've gathered information that can be verified. But since this is YouTube, I'm still gonna say that this video is for entertainment purposes as well. But let's get into it. And we're gonna start with the facts. And we're actually gonna start with Madam CJ Walker's daughter, Alelia. Her name was Lilia. L-E-L-I-A is what her mother named her, but then she later changed her name and added on the, the A apostrophe. She's played by the character Tiffany Haddish, and she's portrayed as being more interested in women romantically than men. She was married to a man, and after she divorced him and moved to Harlem, she appeared to be more interested in women. And this was one of the big storylines that went throughout the movie. She actually seemed to fall in love with the woman throughout the movie. And in the fourth episode, excuse me, it was an episodic series, not a movie, but in the fourth episode, the way her story was wrapped up was that her mother, Madam C.J. Walker, allowed her to live her life instead of pressing on her the need to have an heir. Throughout the series, you see Madam C.J. Walker pressing her for an heir, especially when she finds out that she's sick with a certain disease and may not live long. She wants an heir to her fortune. But in the final episode, you see her let her daughter be free. And she tells her she doesn't have to get married. She doesn't have to produce an heir. And that's when her daughter, Alelia, adopts a daughter she adopts a daughter and the movie makes it seem like she goes on to love a woman this is her her marriage record from her first husband john robinson they got married in 1909 in the state of west virginia and her name at the time was lilia mcwilliams because her father was mr mcwilliams and she married john robinson after she divorced him she went on to marry two more times so she didn't turn away from men like the movie portrays her to have done she didn't turn away from men she was just getting started after she divorced her first husband she was just getting her foot in the game and she actually married two more times in this record this is the marriage directory for at the time her name was lilia robinson and this was in Manhattan in 1919, she married again. You can see here, Lilia Robinson. On June 4th, 1919, she married again. And then I was able to locate her obituary. And if you look at her obituary, it reveals that she actually married three times. They say in a short service conducted at the Howell Funeral Home, Saturday morning, August 22nd at 10.30 o'clock, funeral services for the late Alelia Walker, daughter of late Madam C.J. Walker, were held. Services were strictly private and admission was by card only. By 10 o'clock, the chapel was filled to capacity and extra chairs had to be placed in the aisles to seat the latecomers. Promptly at 10.30, the Reverend A. Clayton Powell Sr., pastor of Absinian Baptist Church, ascended the rostrum. Reverend Powell read from the 90th and 23rd Psalms after the Bontemps Quartet sang Steal Away to Jesus. And it goes on to say she was thrice married, only recently being divorced from Dr. James A. Kennedy. So she was actually married a total of three times. And it appears she did not turn away from men after she divorced her first husband. So that's the first of the biggest lies told in Self Made, which was inspired by the life of Madam C.J. Walker. That's just the first one. Now, secondly, and this is not in order of importance, but secondly, one of the biggest lies told in the movie was that a woman, a mulatto woman named Addie Monroe, rejected Madam C.J. Walker and would not let her sell her beauty products, her hair grower. This was a big theme throughout the entire movie. If you've seen the movie, you see that Madam C.J. Walker is haunted by this woman in real life. Everywhere that Madam C.J. Walker moves to, this woman moves to. 
and she's continually haunted by her and the premise is that she wanted to be employed by this woman this mulatto woman but that this mulatto woman denied her because she was a dark-skinned woman with African features and when I say African meat features I mean a full nose and wide lips and dark skin that's just not true that's not true and if I was a relative of her real name is Annie Pope Turnbow Malone if I was a relative of her I would be upset by the way she was portrayed in this movie because she did not reject Madam CJ Walker from selling her products she actually did hire her she hired her despite what you see in the movie that is completely fictitious in real life she did hire her Eddie Monroe the character in the movie is based on the real life Annie Pope Turnbow she was born in the small town of Metropolis Illinois in 1869 and like Madam CJ Walker she was born to formerly enslaved parents and she was also orphaned at an early age and later raised by her older sisters she attended school through the beginning of high school but eventually stopped going due to some health issues. I was able to locate her real life information in the 1910 census, the federal census, 1910 for St. Louis, for St. Louis City, St. Louis Ward 17, District 0269. She's listed in the census. She's listed as Annie, first name Annie, middle initial M, and last name Pope Turnbow. And she's actually listed as the head of the household. And at this time in 1910, she was 30 years old and she lived with her brother. You see here, William R. Turnbow, that's her brother, the relationship is brother, and both of them are mulatto. And as far as her employment, it says that she's a proprietor, that means she's a business owner, and that she has, an, her industry is education, her industry is school, and she's self-employed, she works on her own account. Now what I want you to look at is the people who live with her. She has, at least 10 boarders all of these people when you look at their relation to the head of household they're all boarders so she has all these people living with her as boarders so she's a very industrious woman is my point even before her hair industry took off she ran a boarding house she's always been an industrious woman from what i can see based on the facts in 1900 at the age of 31 Annie moved to Lovejoy, Illinois and started mixing and experimenting with different ingredients and she soon developed her signature product which she called the Wonderful Hair Grower. After Annie moved to St. Louis in anticipation of the 1904 World's Fair, correctly assessing that the hubbub and large crowds would help her products catch on, she hired Sarah Breedlove, Madam C.J. Walker, as a sales agent. It's not clear how or when they met before working together. It depends on who you ask. But Annie said that she personally cured Madam C.J. Walker's scalp issues. And it does seem plausible that she may have been telling the truth. To grow her business, she often knocked on doors offering free scalp treatments. So it is possible that she did knock on the door of Madam C.J. Walker, Sarah Breedlove. After Madam C.J. Walker married C.J., Charles Joseph Walker, and later struck out on her own competing with Annie, the two seemed to have some kind of falling out. So Madam C.J. Walker was a saleswoman for several years for Annie or Addie, and eventually they fell off. There's no information recorded as to why they fell out or why their relationship fell off, but they fell out. So the colorism that you see portrayed on the screen is self-made. The, the battle, especially the very first episode is called like the great battle or the fight for her life. And it has Madam CJ Walker pitted against Annie Moreau. They have them pitted against each other in a boxing ring. This is a theme throughout the movie that she's fighting this light skin mulatto woman. She's fighting her and it's just not true. It's just not true. And the truth is stranger than fiction. And this movie may have been better if they had focused on the truth, in my opinion. Madam C.J. Walker's great great granddaughter, her name is Alelia Bundles. And she wrote a book. She calls herself a truth seeker. She had to seek the truth about her own great great grandmother because people were telling her anything about her great great grandmother. So she wrote a book. And in the process of writing the book, she sought out the truth about her great great grandmother. And in that book, she explored the cultural climate of that time, the late 1800s to the early 1900s. That book is called On Her Own Ground. And in it, she shares that as far as the issue of colorism during that time period, 
one of the major issues was that the most outspoken black men of that era were marrying mulatto women. She quoted a black newspaper editor specifically having said, quote, black men's opinion on the subject and their criteria for, se for selecting marriage partners fueled a contentious debate within the black community, which Sarah Breedlove herself observed. It is generally the case that those black men who clamor most loudly and persistently for the purity of Negro blood have taken themselves mulatto wives. So the most pro-black men of the day were marrying mulatto wives. So if self-made, if the Netflix movie wanted to be more accurate, they could have presented the battle of colorism, that struggle. They could have presented it in terms of black men wanting to marry light-skinned women, of them looking at a woman's skin color as a criteria for marriage, instead of pitting two black women against each other. That fight was completely fictitious. The two black women that you see pitted against each other in Self Made is completely for your entertainment. So leave a comment and let me know if that entertained you. Leave a comment and let's talk about it. Now, one of the third biggest lies told in Self Made is that Sarah Breedlove, she was portrayed as a domineering wife who demanded that her less ambitious husband do her bidding. She basically bossed her husband around in the movie. And there are scenes in the movie that show her, they show Sarah Breedlove yelling at her husband for not doing what she wanted him to do. And she treated him in the movie like he didn't live up to her standard of ambition. But in reality, her husband, C.J. Walker, Charles Joseph Walker, was just as ambitious as her. And that's what attracted her to him, according to her great great granddaughter, who sought the truth about her life. He was just as ambitious as her. And that's why they were attracted to each other. He matched her fly, basically. Now, the fourth biggest lie is that Sarah Breedlove, Madam C.J. Walker, started her company when she moved from St. Louis. And it said that she moved from St. Louis to get away from Annie Monroe because she didn't want to be in the shadow of Annie Monroe who had created the original hair grower product. She didn't want to be her sh in her shadow. That's how it's portrayed in the movie. But in reality, Sarah Breedlove actually moved to Denver. She moved to Denver, Colorado, and she saw an opportunity there. She moved there because she saw an opportunity to sell the, to the African-American women there whose hair was adversely affected by the climate in Denver. And she also had a sister-in-law who lived there. So that made Denver a viable option for her. And CJ, her, her husband did not accompany her and neither did her daughter who was 20 at the time. Neither of them went with her. Now fifth, and I would say this is the biggest lie told in the series. The biggest lie told in the series comes in episode four, where Sarah Breedlove has a confrontation with Addie Monroe and she admits to stealing Addie Monroe's formula. That is completely untrue and that is fictitious. That is for your entertainment. That is not the truth. She did not steal Addie Monroe's formula from all factual accounts. The formula that both of them were using was one that had been in use since the 1700s. In the book, it specifically says, quote, the real secret was a regimen of regular shampoo, scalp massage, nutritious food, and an easily duplicated sulfur-based formula that neither of them, neither Sarah Breedlove or Eddie Monroe had originated. Home remedies and medicinal compounds with similar ingredients had been prescribed at least since the 16th century. So since the 1700s, this formula that was used in her original hair grower and Madam C.J. Walker's original hair grower had been in use not only by Eddie Monroe or any Pope Turnbow but by other manufacturers since the 1700s. So watching this movie in my opinion this is my personal review and opinion of the movie I didn't appreciate Madam C.J. Walker being portrayed as someone who was in the shadow of a mulatto woman who didn't allow her to work for her. It's almost told in light of another woman like her story is presented Mar Madam C.J. Walker's story is presented in light and, and with so much regard to Annie Monroe. And in the story, you even see where Madam C.J. Walker is haunted by mulatto women. You have to watch the series to understand where she has dreams, where she's been being haunted by mulatto women. And in her real life, 
Annie Monroe is literally haunting her and following her, and that's just not true. She did not steal any products from Annie Monroe or Addie Turnbow or whatever you want to call her. She did not steal her products, and she did not steal her formula, and she was not the domineering wife that the movie portrayed her to be. This was a fictitious movie, so all of that was done for your entertainment. Now, I would like now that I've seen this movie and now that I've been entertained by the movie or by the series, excuse me, I did enjoy the series, but I would like there to be a factual documentary to be produced that shows the factual life of Madam C.J. Walker instead of making up fictional elements of her life just for our entertainment that's my personal opinion at this point i want to see more factual information about madam cj walker but leave a comment and let me know what you think let me know what you think about the netflix series self-made inspired by the life of madam cj walker and let me know if you were entertained by the false stories and the false narratives in that series leave a comment and let me know as always thanks for watching